Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures for this Pentecost Sunday comes from Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. And I read from Genesis chapter 11, and I begin with verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down. And there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I turn to the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And I read from Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood 
Before the day of the Lord comes the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And dear friends, let us rise as we read from the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And dear friends, let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed that's on page 192. Let us confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, Blessed and happy Pentecost. Fifty days after our Lord's resurrection. Just as he promised. Just as the scriptures had said would happen. Ten days ago he ascended into heaven. We observed and remembered his ascension back into heaven. And now today is this amazing event that it has occurred only this time in history of Pentecost, the Jewish festival of Pentecost in Jerusalem that we read in Acts chapter 2. One of the, <laughs> one of the most beat up chapters in the entire scriptures. The ink that has been spilled over this chapter fills volumes of books. As far as what happened, as far as the meaning behind it, as far as 
the words, the sermon that St. Peter spoke and the disciples who spoke in all of the language that all languages of all of the people in the world who had gathered the known world in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost, hearing about the Lord Jesus Christ and how they were cut to the heart, it says. And they were baptized and received the forgiveness of sins. I won't go into the, the minutia as to how Acts chapter 2 is such a controversial chapter because it really is very simple <laughs> and it really is very beautiful. It is this miraculous event where the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, that as we read, as we studied in Luther's Catechism, one of the sections of the Catechism that converted me to the Lutheran faith, when Luther wrote in his explanation to the third article of the Creed, which addresses the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, strengthened and kept me in that one true faith. Because that is the point of contention. That I cannot, by my own reason or strength, that's ridiculous. That I can and I must, by my own reason or strength, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and come to Him. No, it isn't by our reason that we come to faith. We do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ because we understand Him. But rather we understand who He is and what He does by our faith. Our intellect does not govern our faith. Our thinking does not govern our faith. Rather, it is exactly the opposite. Our faith governs our thinking. It governs every aspect of our lives. And why is that? Because the faith that you have, that the Holy Spirit has given to you. And dear friends, this is the basic point. This is the thing to remember about the work of the Holy Spirit. That in the three articles of the Creed, again, we speak about God the Father, the Creator of heaven and the earth. God the Son, the Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. The third, the third article of the Creed, the third person of the Trinity, who sanctifies us, who literally makes saints of us, who makes Christians of us. Because we believe, we have faith. And why do we have faith? How do we have faith? The Holy Spirit has given it to you at your baptism. That's the promise that Mark, Mark chapter 16, he who believes and is baptized, the two go together. And the promises of God which come with them. The Holy Spirit who came upon the disciples upon St. Peter as this split tongue of fire. You know, we've talked about this before, that fire doesn't behave that way. A flame doesn't split. Rather, it's full, but the Holy Spirit, that was this split tongue of flame, flame of fire that rested over all of the disciples, and they had this miraculous ability, this gift, to speak in all of the languages that the people gathered in Jerusalem could understand and believe. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit changes hearts and minds and lives. We are brought to faith. We recognize and we say, yes, I believe because I have faith and I have faith because the Holy Spirit has given it to me. Dear friends, I know that that sounds very simple, but this isn't just a game with words. This is important, very important, because this is the saving faith that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about. This is the faith to which St. Peter, interestingly enough, quoted from 
here in the Old Testament book of the prophet Joel. And he says that I will pour out, this is Joel, and this is Peter quoting him, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, young men shall see visions, old men dream dreams, even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, God, and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. This is the work of the Spirit. This is what He does. He brings about literally the church, the communion of saints that we confess, the faith, the faithful people, you, you, who bear, who carry, who are the beneficiaries of the gifts of faith, of salvation, of heaven. I read just this morning, just as I was in the office, got here early this morning. In the city of Philadelphia, just since yesterday, over 20 shootings. that over the Memorial Day weekend, the three days of Memorial Day weekend, some 140 some odd people gunned down. Dear friends, we know all of this. We, you know, we talk about this. This is the world. This is the world apart from the Holy Spirit. This is the world of the darkness and of the godlessness of sin. This is what happens. This is how it manifests itself. This is how it perpetrates. And that it certainly does cause people to be fearful. And it causes people to truly be fervent in prayer and say, Lord, bring peace into our land to bring peace into the world and that we know that there is no peace in the world rather the peace is within you that's the only place where peace will be peace is in the cross peace is in Christ it simply is not in the world and that we share the peace with each other you share the peace with your family, the dear ones who you love, that you live in the same home, your spouses, your children, your extended family, your friends, your neighbors. This is how we manifest. This is how we prophesy. As St. Peter reiterates from the prophet Joel. Prophesying isn't just fortune telling. It isn't just predicting the future. Prophesying is speaking and living out the truths and the manifestations of God. Being a Christian in your life, in your vocations, in everything you do, in everyone you meet. We had another occasion here in this past Friday. The Greenfield police showed up and young officer came to my office and and a woman who was here, who, how she got here. Uh, you know, you talk about the, the story of the Tower of Babel, that she was so frightened and so exacerbated that I could not understand, literally could not understand what she was saying. And worked to help her, to take care of her immediate needs and pray with her and for her. And that that is carrying out the ministry, the work, the vocations of the church that we are called to do. Pentecost, dear friends, and more specifically, the work of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. For you who are believers, for you who are here this morning, for you who will partake of the Blessed Sacrament and the new way that we'll uh, do it today and see how it goes, and then if we need to talk about it and, and, uh, and um, uh, refine it a little bit, that we'll do that. But even still, nonetheless, that as we partake of this blessed sacrament, bread and wine, body and blood of Christ, that the Holy Spirit is at work. Bringing to you the forgiveness of sin. Strengthening your faith. Because as Luther says, he not only creates our faith, he sustains it. Refreshes it. Strengthens it. Because if there's ever a time that we need a strong faith... <laughs> This is it. And just simply to say to you, dear friends, I don't know any better people to carry out the challenging work of the church in this day and age 
more so than you. Thanks be to God for all you do. More so than you probably even realize. More so that you don't even know of the lives that you touch, of the people that you share, your witness, just, just the way you live your life as a Christian, as a believer. That's totally different than the world. You are the light of the world. You carry the Spirit within you. And you speak it. You show it. And you bring glory and praise and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ by it. That's what Acts chapter 2 is. It's the glorious story of the Holy Spirit being poured out for the disciples, the apostles now, who spoke in the languages of all the people, who then from that moment went back home to wherever home is and shared that gospel message. And in one sermon, the one sermon that St. Peter proclaimed had a worldwide effect. That's the way the Spirit works. That's the way our Lord works. You, dear friends, not by your own reason or strength, but by the strength and the work and the precious gift of faith given to you by the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, promised by the Lord Jesus Christ that He would come after His ascension and through which He still today continues to show forth and bring forth people to faith, salvation, and into the church, into the communion of saints. That's who the Holy Spirit is. That's what He does. And that's what we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday. Alleluia, dear friends. Alleluia. Amen and amen.